Ah, uh, it's a bit noisy in here, but never mind. Ah, oh, damn it! Been feeling like absolute crap the last couple of days. Oh, fine time to be feeling like that. I'm preparing for a holiday, but never mind. This is your board! I was bored, you see, so I did the board. No pun intended. You see, it's blinking away in my test room. That's my vertical program card that you can't get anywhere from me again unless you make yourself one, but never mind. Groceries. I showed you how to make one before another video if anybody bothered watching it. Um, right. You see the two wire links there? Well, oh. that's what's keeping this board alive at the minute. There was actually quite a lot of things wrong with the board. Um, the fact is you'd attempted to do it yourself. Well, they were fine, but there was a couple of other things wrong. One, the processor was on its last legs. I actually got this board to run initially by replacing the socket under here and fixing a couple of broken traces. Come on, camera. Fuck's sake, focus. Camera doesn't want to focus very well. There it goes. Yeah, but... But ten minutes after that, the processor died on its arse. That one there. I don't know if you can see that. But... Is that there? Well, that's the 60... That one. That one. You see how it looks a, a little bit misshapen. Now look underneath. Burnt. It actually burned out. The way I found that out was when it died and I replaced the socket there and everything, everything died. I'm probing around the pins here and I've got all the relevant signals coming out the gal chip, which is just an address decoder, by the way. It's just they've put it into a programmable logic so they can adjust the component count and put the traces where they wanted them basically I've got the right signals coming out of here but nothing working on the I.O. side this is the other half of the address to go to here this sends the chip select signals off to everywhere controls the 68681 which is up here that's been replaced as well by the way it controls the ROM select unit it, it, it basically does a lot and what you've got is this is tied to the processor and this is the output side of it. So, pins 18 and 19 are the enable signals for this. 18 blinking away because it's on an address line. 19, nothing. So check back at the processor again. And the enable and cue signal were jumping around. Not pulsing as they should be, they're actually just jumping about. They're doing crazy things. I thought, no, that processor shafted. So I put my finger on it, nearly burnt my finger. It was hot. So took that out, took that out, basically replaced the brains of the board. Still wouldn't run. Now this is where mega boards can really annoy you. This, this chip here, I socketed this and put it back in just to see if it was trace damage or there's anything underneath it. That chip there was given a phantom fault. Actually still has a fault just now. But it was given a phantom fault. It threw me off in the weeds for well, I don't know, <laughs> maybe half the day. What you would get uh, I was going to video actually showing you what happens. Well, maybe I can do that. Hold on. I'll fire up the scope here. I'll shut this off. Yeah. There's a everything power supply. Scope's ready. Put a light on. Right. I'll take this wire link off for the minute. And there's the wire link disabled. Right. You see all pins here for various things we're doing. So this hobby can be messy. Okay, now this might just fire up as it is, because it sometimes does, but I don't want it to know what it's doing. Give it a few more minutes to settle down. 
few more minutes for the internal capacitors and everything to drain off. Because what happens is if you leave this board for about five, six minutes, it won't start up. No, it's starting up all the time now. But it does have a red heron fault. I'll show you. It's hard to do on camera. Right. Pin one of this. This program will seven generator select. Pin two. You see that there? That's the data transfer acknowledge line on 6861. It's basically the second chip select line. 6861 down there sends that signal out when it wants to send information between itself and the processor. I think it's got to do with the data capture. I'm not entirely sure. Serial logic ain't my strong point. So check pin 3. I see it's mostly pulsing away but there's some erratic pulses underneath it. It should be mostly high and then with active low spikes. But you see sometimes it's got low spikes going high instead. It's got interference on the line. Which isn't helping. Now I thought at first I had a problem with the interrupt. But I don't. Because when this line's stuck you tend to find that that interrupt line on pin 21 is jammed on. It's low all the time. Shouldn't be. They know the missus here, she's been annoying me about the washing machine every half hour. So anyway, I really wish this would actually break down again so I can show you after it's been running for a while, it refuses to break. But that kind of tells you that it's refuses to break. But that kind of tells you that you have got a problem with the chip somewhere because ICs can fail in two different ways, I find. They can either run and die when they're hot or they can be dead and start running when they're warm. I think this one here at U30 has a bit of both. Let's see. There we go. Frozen out. Right. Here's our shred here and folk. Here's pin one again. Right. I've got a white shot here. What happens here when I probe pin 2? Bang! Starts running. You saw that with your own eyes. It's locked in reset, probe pin 2, it starts running. Now, I thought I had a fault on the data transfer line. And what I actually did was I bent pin 9 out and left it there and bang, the board starts running. I've got pin 9 back in there now. That's not the fault though. No. The fault was on the other side of the board. I'll show you. It's on the other side of the memory ready line. This is bloody hard to do on camera. I'm not entirely sure what line that is coming back down. Now that's pin 4. of U30. There's pin 5. Now look what's happening there. Look at pin 6. This is an 08 is an AND gate, right? There's 4. Go wait again. There's 5. High, logic one, high, high, 
output of the AND gate should be high, yes? Uh, no. Stock solvable. Not good. No. Bang. I've taken pin five and put it through to pin six. Now what I've done there is I'm ignoring pin four for the minute. Pin four. We've actually got it all the way around there. Pin four is the select line for programmable sound generator. It comes off of that. And five is a line coming down for I think it's a clock signal. Pin six is memory ready line for the processor. They put a bunch of different signals through a couple of AND gates to control memory ready. Pin six is completely dead on this gate. Memory ready can't work. I'll show you on the schematics. I know this is a long video, guys, but I am doing it for a friend who has been turning his hair out with this board, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, to some people this might probably be as clear as mud. Okay. Right, first of all, ignore this half. Folks actually on this gate here. But ignore this half. Yeah, it looks all nice and cool. Well, right. U24 is a flip flop. It's a set reset flip flop. Was it a D type? Sorry, it's a D type flip flop. Usually, what it does is whatever's on D it puts on Q. And then you've got a not Q line which is the opposite of this. Memory ready comes out of queue and it goes off to the processor. The reason you do that through this and this is when you want to transfer data from 68681 to the processor, you got to slow down the memory transfer a little bit, which is what memory ready does. So you would set that line, slow the memory transfer down, and then send whatever off. I think that's how it works anyway. Somebody will probably correct me. Believe it or not, I'm not a whiz kid at this. I learned the same way as you guys. Bit by bit. Okay. We've got a 4520 clock generator up here. It's, a binary, it's been used to clock generator, but it's a binary counter. Ignore that for a minute. That just sets it clear for this. Doesn't feature at all. Because it's been held off because the program was sound generator is not being selected. Okay, so that line's high all the time. This line here, although we didn't see it on the scope, this line here is normally pulsing. It's the enable line for the pro it's the enable line for the six eight six eight one and a few other things. Basically, it allows the I.O. to work. Sorry, sorry if I'm rambling, but I'm not feeling very well at all today. But, pin 5 is normally pulsing, whereas this is high already, and this is pulsing. 6 will be pulsing. Which means your memory ready line should be pulsing in time with this. Now if the sound generator was selected, this wouldn't be pulsing. Reason why? We're sending data off to the sound circuit. Not processor.
I think that's how it works anyway. If this isn't pulsing, then what you actually get is if this is being held at a particular state, which it will be, and this isn't moving, but this can't move because it's not being it's being held off by this. This gate here is going to be at the wrong state. And sorry. We'll do that bit again. I'm terrible today. Right. I explained this the wrong way around. Because this isn't pulsing. Memory ready isn't pulsing. The processor is going to be frozen because it's in a permanent wait state. Now, when you send a false signal down this, you'll set this to the wrong state and start set this to a different state and the processor will take off. And then when you let the probe go, you change the state again and cause another wait state. And for some reason, that all this process of running in it, more often or not, it'll keep running. So you think the fault's here, and I tore my hair out for hours on it. Literally hours. Had this chip off a couple of times, checking traces here, there and everywhere. No, it was purely by accident I decided to ground this pin off. And thought to myself, no, hang on, this moved. And then I checked around the signals and this and found out that the pin 6 was doing sod all. So all I've done here is, because I'm just using the test ROM here, I can ignore this line altogether, because it's always sitting at a high state. All we need is two high states for this to work. So it basically becomes just a buffer. As long as you're not using sound, this can act just the buffer. So all I've done is instead of this signal going through the gate, I've just tied it to the output. That means without getting blocked here because this pin doing nothing. CIA line just goes straight through to D, goes to Q, memory ready is pulsing. Clear as mud, eh? So, most people have probably turned this off by now, but I know Damon, you'll still be watching it, so. All I need to do now is put another 74HC08 in there. And then I can take that wire link off. And that'll be that flying. Right, that's probably the worst video I've ever done in my life. I'm really tired. Splitting headache, but yeah. It's done. Believe it or not, there's another video following up soon. I've got your other board to look at. I might as well, because if I go to bed now, I'm not going to sleep. Not with this headache. Absolutely horrendous video. I am truly feeling dire tonight.